to be honest, like, have you ever felt like there was really a big difference? Um, from what, like battle rap and rapping, just in general? Battle rap and rapping, I always, I always felt like it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's two different the same sports. shit, really. No, 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 no. It's two different sports, and I didn't, I didn't really understand that until I got on the other side. Now the thing with battle rap, right? And and this what this what I had to learn just with making my whole transition from the battle rap side to the actual music business. Uh, battle rap, our entire, our our whole way of being a battle rap is to be creative. How creative can you be, entendre wise, metaphorically? How creative can you be? And with with music is. How direct can you be? Like, how can you make them get it without even thinking about it? Oh, technical difference. All right, we good? All right, cool. So, so we where we was at? We was at um the industry and the yeah, between battle rap and the industry. Yeah, so, so going back to that, like, one of the one of the big differences is like when when crafting for a battle rap. Um, you kind of got to craft like how technical you can be. It's a lot of technical things when crafting for a battle rap. Right. And, um, you know, punchlines, metaphors, double entendres, rebuttals, is all type of stuff you got to craft. Um, and your objective is to trick the fans. That's battle rap. How could you trick them? How could you trick them enough to where they go, oh, he got me, and now I get it, which would make a crowd reaction. Right. Versus doing music your objective is to make sure that shit goes straight to them without them even thinking. And I've learned that. Like, I've learned that, like, you know, uh, one of the, one of the, the like, the hardest hidden lines ever was, uh, like, when Tupac said, uh, 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 she was Dear Mama, when she was like, she in the kitchen trying to fix us a hot plate, plate. working with the scrap she was given. Mama made miracles. Miracles, everything's every given. given. Like, son, that line, that shit hit home out of this world. Facts. You know what I'm saying? That shit hit yeah. home. And that's the but, uh, but we got lines like that in battle rap. Especially, you said what? We got lines like that in battle rap. We got a few of them, but like, nigga, consider that filler. <laughs> nigga, if you just said that, like, yeah, you know, mama made miracles, every Thanksgiving, niggas would be like, and... <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the bar? What's the, what's bar? the bar? Like, like <laughs> and you know, hey, the fans are make it up. Like, you know, mirror cold, like a mirror. Yeah. A mirror, <laughs> a mirror is frozen. It's a mirror cold. Like, During know, Thanksgiving is when winter hit, so it's like mirror winter, cold mirror Thanksgiving. Cold Thanksgiving, <laughs> like the pilgrims wore jackets. In the field, you know, <laughs> battle, battle she crazy. Make it more that went over your head, now, but, man. Yeah. And I also, oh, also, also, one of the um, also one of the biggest difference is like with battle rap, you on your own. Like when you or some niggas be getting help, you know, whatever, whatever. But most definitely, mm -hmm. you on your own. Versus when making records, and I didn't notice when I was like yeah. up and coming on the music industry side. I thought like you just find the beat and you go in the studio and you make a record. Nah, it don't work yeah. like that, bro. Well, that's These a huge big, collaboration. Big records, These big big records. It's damn near a basketball team of people that go into these big records. Right. Like, right. If, you about, like, credits, if you just look at the credits, if you just look at the credits, you see how and, many and people. And that's the thing we never really did. Like, you don't really, you will hear a song, but you don't never go Google the credits. Like, when you look at no, the No, I mean, credits, that's what album, the album inserts yeah. was. That's why they about this, this like, shit so you don't know. <laughs> that's but, crazy. But like back in the day, if you go through some of our favorite app, uh, rap albums back in the days and you look at the credits in those big ass books in the CD pack, it'll tell you written by so-and-so, co-written by so-and-so, produced, saxophone, drum. All that. Keys. I kind of miss that shit. Yeah, it'd be a no, but I mean, it's me. more available to you now on Google. Oh, no, it but is, most it is, but like the average when consumer I was, when I doesn't started care working though. On some of my my newer projects and and from my older projects, it was like, all right, you know, find my producer. Hey, let me get that beat. Okay, rap to the beat, and that was it. But like when you think about like these big timeless records, it's a lot that go into them. A lot, right. like, and that's why they call it produce. Like you could be a dope rapper, but if you ain't produce right, it ain't gonna never hit right. 
It's a lot. Yeah. It's a like lot. Like cannabis. Even, uh, even from the shit you record on, like from the specific type of mics, specific type of compressions, specific type of uh, mixers, frequencies, it's shit that go through these records that make them addictive. They don't just right. happen. It don't just happen because you made a dope song. It's other right. shit that make these songs addicting. Like you ever hear a record and be like, "Why I can't stop singing that shit?" It's like that, that 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 four note. Um, there's, there's a specific four notes. Yeah, it's a, that's it's like a, it's in a, every a, hit record. It's a for it's a it look. It's another thing, right? So I I didn't know this neither, but um, they was like it's certain records like our our beat. Our, our heart has a specific type of beat and the tempo is in between like 80 and 95. So right. when you produce beats in that tempo, it automatically hit home. Like records got, I mean like radio records got a specific tempo. It's like the people behind the music industry know all of this shit. Yeah. So they'll tell you we need a song, we need you to do we need you to do eight records that's 85 tempo, nine records that's 80 tempo. You know, and they'll tell you, and then they'll pick, they'll say, okay, we like that one at 80 tempo. Okay, let's add a guitar just for that little five seconds to add a, that, man, I swear, bro, when you mm. get, re when you in the studio with these bigger artists, these records are literally produced, bro. They, they're, so, not just, they're not just, you stumble on a hit. They're so so who, the artists did, who the artists did you have the pleasure of sitting in their sessions and seeing this, this whole production go down? I would say, uh, I would say, like, just in the TDE camp, like, seeing, you know, Kendrick and Abso and seeing they session files. Yeah. Oh, sorry, big dog. Wait, hold on, hold on. What's this? Headphones? Headphones. Headphones. Okay. Headphones. Okay. Headphones. <laughs> but no, just seeing, like, um, so, like, you like, you know, when I be in the studio and I just like, let me go through somebody else's files and see what they session look like. So you right. pull up their Pro Tools session and you'll be like, God damn, it's like 500 Stacks. tracks. And it don't even sound like that. It sound like one record all the way through. Right. But bro, it'd be like 500 tracks, like recorded tracks of like doubles, layers, nigga yeah. fucking instruments. All, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Cause a lot of, but you gotta think about it too. Like when we was going to the studio early on, I remember just having one track for the beat. Now when I'm in the studio, the beat is tracked the fuck out. So every instrument is its own thing, and um, I never used to do that until later in life. You know, and then I realized, damn, like this is better. Like, well, the funny thing for me is I started out that way, and then got to the two track point. Yeah. Where it was like, cause I, I started recording in an actual like like a studio that would that, that I could go to all the time and get get work done. So I saw the process of everything getting tracked out on ADATs. Yeah. Back when ADATs, motherfuckers was like, I I be in the studio and I just hear ding ding ding. I'm like, yo, what you doing, yo? I'm track track tracking out this sound. Yeah. And yeah. the next sound would be the drum, and the next sound would be the snare, the next sound yeah. would be whatever synthesized sounds they put on top of it. And then the two track shit kind of like came into my mind like, this is much easier to do. When I heard Cameron say, yo, um, oh boy was a two track. When he released it, it was a two track. And I was like, two track? Nigga just doing two tracks? Two track. Nigga just took the beat, rapped over it, somebody mixed it, the beat was mixed, they put it out. Yeah, but that that that's another thing. That's another thing that's extremely important, bro. Mixing. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. all these little aspects that happen behind music, I didn't know that they was that important. I'm like, yo, you just get in the studio, and make a record, and put it out. Nah, 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 nah. nah, nah. See, I agree. I agree with that, and because obviously we know a lot of work goes into producers and what they do, right? But a lot right. of the, yeah. the artists that are breaking here, now here, is just here. making songs in their crib and putting it out. Right. Like it's, yeah, it's, no, no, no. it's I like, think, I like think, the Bobby Smurders, the, the 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 you know the the artists that is just like yo, it's raw music that's just a vibe and people yeah. relate to it and it's I'm, hitting. 
Word. Yo, Fit, let me I'm blow your mind real quick. You. Look, look, look. I'm going to be honest Big with Drip. You. Hold on. One second. Big Drip. <laughs> that record, Big Drip. That was recorded in Zyax. Well, see, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's, 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 it's some, t for me, I think music has everything to do with being relatable and knowing the person you're talking to, knowing the right. crowd of people you're talking to. Right. And then, then and sonically, it has to sound good. Yeah, I mean, it, it does have to sound good. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like, I think a lot of these artists are not mixing their shit when they putting it out. I think it takes a talented producer or a talented person to hear, oh, this guy's a star. And then they move forward with the production and doing all right. that. But right. you have to have it before that. Right. You can't I'm just a, tell you be a nobody thing, and they make you a star. Look, I'm gonna tell you another thing though, like, and this is something that I learned in the industry too, especially with the the, the, the team that I'm with. Is a difference between hot records and big records. Right? True. So most of these records that that they're hot, they hot, they fizzle out though. They fizzle yeah. out in a month, two months, fizzle out. And it's because they're like microwave records. Right, like throw that shit in the microwave, let it let it heat up, nigga, and throw it out. Okay, cool. They fizzle right out, and this is why they keep saying, "Okay, you need another single, you need another single." Right, but like for the people, like the J. Cole's, the Kendricks, and all these, the certain individuals at the top, love those they guys. Make music that ain't gonna go nowhere for a long time, and it's because right. it's because um the production. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me turn this shit down. This nigga over blasting this. Yeah, I can hear him. What's the low? Okay. But yeah, um, like I said, you know, they they'll go into the studio and it'll take them four or five months to make these records. And that's why right. the records last that long. You feel me? That's why you can go yeah. back to section eighty, you can go back to O three adolescents and it's still got the same feel as when it first was produced. That's right. why it's a music so, that's saying like, it's at the time. It's a home cooked meal versus it's wifey versus a side chick. Is you feel me? You know how right. No, nah, but no, nah, but no, nah, but yeah, so like I was saying, um, you know, uh just just like cooking those home cooked meals when it comes down to making music. And um, I also want to quote Rain. Rain said one of the realest shits I seen in the interview, uh, when he was just talking about like, you know, why people say battle rappers and shit can't make music. And um I, I want to go down that whole battle rap rapper can't make music thing because it's been this whole stigmatism with the music industry. Why battle rappers can't make music, but in all actuality, 95% of the major artists in the industry was once battle rappers. All of them, right. every last one of them. Right. So it's not that battle rappers can't make music. It's just most battle rappers don't really get produced. And, or if they not getting produced, battle rappers are trying to make records like the whack niggas. And Rain quoted some real shit. He was like, battle rapper fans want to hear them be good. So why not make ah! songs like Nas? Why not make Nas right. type records? Why not make why not? records? Why not make like actual rap records? Of right. course niggas going to say you whack if you a fucking lyrical god and you talk about fuck of the bitch, fuck of the bitch. Of course niggas going to say you <laughs> 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 Nah, that's a fact though. That's a fact. It's fast. Like they, like, they, they're not gonna be used to like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you got a strip club rap. record, nigga. You how you go rap, from, dog. how you go from a god, a battle rap god on stage to making a strip club record? You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't work. It'll never work. You gonna right. always be looked at as the nigga who trash. So, like for battle rapper, and it's just all the battle rappers that's out there making music. Like, if you known for being, like, a super lyricist or you known for being a nigga that do that, make records about that or make records that show your creativity. You know what I mean? Like, right. make those, like, like it ain't, like, wh when the last time, other than Eminem, when the last time you heard a battle rap nigga make a record about how it feels prepping for a battle? Nah, I haven't heard it. You get what I'm saying? Like, how many battle rap fans are, are lock into that? Like, oh, that's how it feels going through. Right. You feel me? Right. That's a lot weak of arms are sweaty. 
not even right in the battle. And and Eminem made it from the white side, you know, the mom spaghetti and all that shit. But like, yeah. you know what we be going through. We be having baby mama drama. It be all types drama of shit. all types of uh, like niggas be wondering why we don't come to the battle full prep, man. You <laughs> <laughs> man, we be trying to keep right. it cordial online so a nigga don't have no ammunition next week. Listen, fact, <laughs> that's the thing, you can't tell nobody, son. Right. You can't really tell nobody, bro. Nigga be trying to keep it cordial online because you don't, my nigga, we be going through some stuff. So, my, and we my nigga, I went through something for 10 years and couldn't say nothing. So we but, can't but, but, 10 but, years but, I was going through something, couldn't say nothing. Is, say that, nothing is because, that fair, though, bro? Like, is that nah, fair, fair. For, for, for battle rap fans to want you to only speak about battle rap when that's not the only aspect of your life? That's, that's it's not. I can't say that's exactly what they want. Because I've seen some dope rounds be delivered that wasn't necessarily all about a battle. You know what I'm saying? Right. I would say say from me being like a rapper, but also being on the entertainment aspect of battle rap, like being daylight, the entertainer and battle rapper, fans just want to be entertained. That's it. Battle rap fans just want to be entertained right then and there. So no matter how you do it, they just want to go, oh, my God. Right. And if you got to talk about whatever you could talk about to make them say, oh, my God, they're going to go for it. That's battle rap fans, right? But no the shit. thing is, battle rap fans want it right then and there. They don't want it tomorrow. They don't want it next week. If we in the building, give it to us right now. Yeah, right. Right now. This Turn smack rapper, only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard, making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard. Told Jim I need a bomb I could drop on you niggas. Bad boy, I'm never gonna stop for you niggas. I don't give a fuck who you got as the illest. I solidify my spot with gorillas. 